Frank, uh, you've been here about a week uh, at BYU. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Thank you very much. A lot of people are excited to have you here. Uh, Jay Omer, longtime BYU strength and conditioning coach. Uh, he did things one way, you do things another. We'll dive into kind of your philosophy in a moment. But give us a little background of where you're from and how you got to BYU. Absolutely. I was born in uh, Tampa, Florida, raised in Tampa, Florida. <clears throat> did my undergrad work at uh, Kentucky Wesleyan College in Owensboro, Kentucky. Uh, from there, I got my first job in uh, Abilene, Texas at Hardin Simmons University. Um, after that, I got hired at Arizona State full time. I was at Arizona State for a year. I uh, had the opportunity to come up to Utah State, worked at Utah State for two years, which is where I met Kelly Papinga. I actually coached him there for uh, for a year before he left on his mission. That's how he got so strong? Yeah, it is how he got so strong. That Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Makes sense. And then um, from there, I left and uh, went to the Citadel. I was the head strength coach at the Citadel for two years. Um, had an opportunity to come back to University of South Florida in Tampa, where I was from, and spent three years there, and then got hired uh, as the head strength coach at University of North Texas, which was the last place I was before I came here. So what what convinced you to come to BYU and become the new strength and conditioning coach? <clears throat> well, what a great uh, university uh, and a great group of kids to work with. Uh, and that, that, to me, is the biggest draw, is being able to, to work at a, at a unique environment where the standards are very high, both academically and uh, morally for the kids. You know, you get to work with just a different kind of kid, a different kind of athlete, and um, but still compete at a very high level. And I really uh, appreciate that about the university and about our kids and our football program, and that's what excites me the most about it. How was it for you? I mean, you, you, you knew this stuff about BYU coming into it. You come in your first day, you meet the team. What were your first thoughts? I love like, it. Oh, boy. No, I love it. I love <laughs> it. You know, guys. The, the, the guys are hungry, and that's the thing that, that I love most about it. They're attentive. You tell them something to do. They do it. They, they, they say, Roger that. Yes, sir. And we're good to go. And we roll right into it. Um, you know, every day that we've come, come through the room and, and done what we've asked the kids to do, they've gotten a little bit better every time we've asked them to do it. We haven't taken any steps back. We've taken steps forward every day this week. And, uh, and that, that's, been real, that's been a real uh, uh, pleasant aspect of, the, of this transition so far. So I really appreciate that about the kids and, and, and what we're doing. You mentioned the uh, Roger that. I've heard that you, you have asked some of the players to say Roger that. Well, not some of them, all of them. All of them. All of them. Yeah, we don't, we don't no say, no, we no don't say yes, sir. I just, in, in, in the last 12 years that I've been doing this, uh, I find out that yes, sir ends up just being something that kids say to placate you. You're sitting there explaining something to them. Mm. Like, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. And then they're not <laughs> listening to you. They're just trying to placate you. And I don't like that. So um, actually, my me- two of my mentors were both former Force Reconnaissance Marines. And uh, we developed a system uh, called a Warrior Mindset Program at University of North Texas. And it's not so much about the physical aspect. It's more about the mental aspect. And one of the things that we do with our players is they're allowed to say, roger that, and they're allowed to say it one time. And that means orders acknowledged, expect results. So if we tell them to do something and they say, roger that, that means they acknowledge what we're telling them to do, and then they're going to do it exactly the way that we tell them to do it. And there's no more of the, the yes, sir. We're not going to serve us to death. I, I like that. Uh, is, it that is it an intense place when you walk into that weight room? Is it a place where uh, you have fun, or is it – we go to work? It better be intense. Uh, yeah. what, what I just got done telling our players the other day is, what will people think of us when they walk in the door? If a scout from Nebraska walked in the door mm-hmm. and watched our team play, what would he go back and tell those guys? Would he say, oh, they're soft, they're in there playing around, messing around in the weight room, and think it looks like fun, they're just kind of going through the motions? Or would he come back and say, boys, we better strap our helmets on because we're going to be in for a four-quarter battle coming uh, in September? I'm fired up right now hearing um, about that. Man. Can we can we lift after this? Absolutely. Come on. I got all day now. Let's go. Gosh. Frank Wintrick is on BYU Sports Nation, the new strength and conditioning coach. Is that your title here? Because you were director of player performance, I believe, in North we, Texas? Yeah, we said um, uh, football performance, and I'd like to continue to call it that here because okay. what we're looking at is more than just strength and conditioning. We're not just focusing on getting the players stronger and getting them in shape. Those things are nice, but we're looking at a holistic approach. So what we're trying to do from a performance standpoint is improve all aspects of performance, not just the physical aspects, but the psychological aspects, the technical aspects, and the tactical aspects. So tying all four of those things together, which we call our four pillars of sport mastery, tying all four of those things together is going to help make us the best BYU football team that we can be. And all the things that I've done and all the things I've learned other places are great, but we need to tweak our program to fit this place, our academic demands, the uniqueness of our players, the uniqueness of the way Coach Mendenhall wants things done, um, and, and build our program to fit the way uh, our, our coaches and our university expect our, our team to play and be. 
What are some of the biggest things, biggest differences that you've noticed here, working with Mendenhall, working with the trainer Steve Pincock mm-hmm. and Brett Mortensen? Yeah. I know there have been a lot of injuries at BYU. Right. So, so what are some things that you're doing to, to cater to BYU's needs? Well, I mean, number one, Coach Mendenhall and Steve Pincock, those two that you just mentioned are absolutely outstanding. I'm just thrilled to be able to work with Coach Mendenhall. Um, Dan McCartney, the head coach that I work for at University of North Texas, was wonderful to me and gave me an opportunity at the Division One level to, uh, to get my first start. And, uh, and I learned an awful lot from him. I feel like this uh, is going to be a great step for me in building just not professionally but also personally because I think that Coach Mendenhall, I can learn an awful lot from him. The, his organization and the way that he looks at doing things is, is really, really unique and special. And so I'm excited about doing that. And then Steve Pincock, what an outstanding athletic trainer. He's, he's got a lot of experience. He's very, very thorough. Every day uh, I get an injury report, usually two or three times a day, on guys getting them updated and letting me know who's got what and how we need to modify those guys. And then we work around those things to help get those guys ready. But um, just from the standpoint of making sure that we do a great job taking care of our kids, you know, we're, we're eliminating things actually from the program. You know, guys did a lot of overhead lifting in the past. We're not going to be doing those things. A lot of Olympic lifting, we're not going to be doing, the, do, doing those things either. Um, so we've kind of changed the approach to what we're going to do it's it's a bit different um one's not right one's not wrong it's just a little bit of different approach fred quintrick in charge of byu football performance does that sound better absolutely in charge of football for performances on byu sports nation so take us take us into some of those things that you do uh that have been called maybe new and innovative mm-hmm. so when we guy when we get the guys in the very first thing we do is uh get them in their cleats and we actually drag them out to the practice field we're going outside we're outside of the ipf now we're out in the cold every morning at 6 a.m with our guys uh want them out in the elements want them brave in the elements because you know if there's a football game and it was 20 degrees outside we wouldn't call a game for the weather we're going to go out there and play in it so we're going to train in it we did the same thing at unt uh, in the summertime we'd have our guys out there in, a, in 120 degree heat and we go out there and we train in it and when we get into september and play games and it was uh two o'clock in the afternoon and 100 degrees out on the turf we would absolutely wear people down, ground and pound. And by the time teams got in the fourth quarter, you could see those guys tapping out. We expect the same thing here. We're going to bring that same mindset and that same approach to our training here. Uh, we tell our guys in the cold and the heat, or no matter what it is, um, we tell them, it, it, mind over matter. If you don't mind, it don't matter. And, uh, and that's, that's the, the, what they hear from me over and over and over again. Um, so we run them out on the field, and uh, everything we do is very exact. You know, Coach Mendenhall's like that, and it's neat because I'm like that as well. And so we, uh, we, we spread them out in the, in the lines. We do a, a very thorough, dynamic warm-up. Usually takes about 25 to 30 minutes for our guys to get warmed up, but hits from head to toe. We're going to hit every aspect of their body from head to toe. It's kind of funny. I was walking down the line the other day, and one of the kids looked over, and he goes, man, we're hitting muscles I ain't never touched before. And I was like, that's good. You know, I, I, I like hearing that, you know, that, that they're that they're experiencing some new things, and, and I think that's great. Uh, from there, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we'll go into some uh, very light uh, plyometric work. So we'll start off with some light jumps, progressing into some heavier jumps, progressing into some medicine ball throws, progressing into sprint work. And we do a lot of speed work with the guys. And then we'll transition to the weight room. We'll do a total body lift every time we come into the weight room. Again, working the guys from head to toe. Every time the guys step out on the football field, we're never going to play football just with our arms or just with our legs. So we get away from the upper body, lower body split and train the total body using a lot of multi-joint movements uh, with our guys. Squats, presses, pulls, um, those types of things. And then we have a very special Emphasis on posterior chain, low backs, glutes, and hamstrings, uh, making sure that we strengthen those areas, posterior shoulder, um, because we, we want to get away from what we call the mirror mentality. Uh, guys like to train what they see in the mirror. They want to have big pecs, <laughs> big biceps, big quads, but the muscles that are on the back side of the body are the ones that are most important, the posterior delts, uh, the glutes, the hamstrings, the low back. Those are the athletic muscles. You know, you see a lot of your sprinters, they're pulling their hamstrings. A lot of guys in college football, NFL, are missing time because of hamstring pulls. We want to try to eliminate those things as much as possible uh, by training those and really focusing on those parts of the body and then uh, doing a lot of injury prevention work you know we understand football players shoulders knees hips ankles so we spend a lot of time with that today we actually spent a lot of time on our neck uh, you know training the neck and making sure that our guys have good strong healthy necks and that was part of what we did today as well when you look at what you do you know monday through friday what's kind of a general schedule of when you lift when you Right, Recover. so we, we train five days a week, and we'll train our guys on, a, on what we refer to as a high-low sequence. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday are high days. So those are high CNS days, days that were really challenging the central nervous system. So everything we're doing is very high intensity, very low volume. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we back that down. We go high volume, low intensity. And what that allows the central nervous system time to do is recover. And those are the times we put in more of our ancillary work, like the kind of things we did today, posterior shoulder, biceps, triceps, abs, those kinds of things. And then uh, on the high days, we're heavy squat, heavy bench, heavy pull, sprint work, jump work, medicine ball throws, heavy plyometrics, those type of things with our players. 
Frank, maybe you could uh, just tell us a little bit about the, the difference between um, different positions that, that are on the field. So uh, what's like a lineman's typical workout day compared to that of a quarterback right. or, or a defensive back? Absolutely. So one of the things that, that we're going to bring here and, and, and we've developed over the course of the last four years is pretty neat. Right now, everybody's in a very general phase. So pretty much quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, everybody's doing the same thing. Once we get into the summertime, we're going to get away from that, though. My staff and I are going to meet with the football staff, and we're going to get with each individual coach. And I ask those coaches three to five things. What are three to five things your guys can do coming in in August for camp that are going to help make your job a world easier when they step out on the football field? What are those things that those guys can do? And then we're going to learn their drills. So their agility isn't going to be sprint, shuffle, backpedal. It's going to be the specific position work that those coaches are going to have those kids do in August. So they're already two months ahead by the time they roll in in August. Then what we'll do is we're going to build. Well, look at Michael. He's so excited about it. <laughs> look, we're... if you want to change your projection, for the first four games now. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I want to hold it against you. We're going we're gonna to build the lifting around the specific needs of the position work. So everything that we're doing is tailored to fit the individual needs of, of the athlete. And again, not just any athlete, but the BYU football player. Why? What makes you so excited when you hear this? Explain why it, you're so excited. It, it just makes sense. And I feel like this is something that, that we as players here, uh, um, we've, I've talked to Spencer Hadley, who was just on, and this is something that we've always wanted, wanted and it's it's been a long time coming, and I feel like uh, you coming here right now, I think that, that the players are excited. Um, having a change is always exciting, and then not only is it a change, but it, it's a it's a great change, and just it just makes sense. And especially if you're a player, you want to be working on those those uh, position specific workouts. You want your body to be fresh. Talking about the backside workout, I mean, <laughs> back hamstrings, glutes. That's where your speed comes from, and. Uh, it just makes sense. So I'm, I'm I'm fired up, man. Just listening to this, this gets me uh, gets me going. I wish I had one more year to, to, to be under your reign, you know. And uh, it's exciting stuff. Well, you're welcome to come back anytime. We'd love to work I, with you. Once my shoulders as as you get healthy, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be there. I'll be there a few days. Yeah. There are different seasons. Um, you know, it's not just like spring ball and the season in the fall. You have what's going on right now, spring ball, I suppose summer, and then what happens during fall. How do you change things during those seasons? Well, we've got to modify the training to fit what's going on. So obviously, you know, during this time of year, what we're doing is the most important thing that, that can go on. But we also have to take into account academic schedule and academic load. So we look at when the kids are going to be having finals week and midterms and those kinds of things, and we take into account – that time of year and say, okay, well, maybe the week that they're doing finals and midterms isn't the best time of week to test them. So when those things are coming up, we know to kind of back off the guys. We'll go ahead and plan in a, uh, a scheduled um, deload week to allow the guys' bodies to recover, but that allows their bodies to recover as well as their minds to be focused on what they need to be focused on from an academic standpoint. Come football season, we got to be all about ball. So we want to continue to get our guys stronger throughout the course of the year. I'll always look at the end season as our longest uninterrupted block of training that we're going to have. You know, anytime because NCAA rules, we're allowed typically eight week blocks with the kids. So we'll get eight weeks in the winter, eight weeks in the summertime. But once camp starts, you've almost got 30 weeks with the guys, especially if you go to a bowl game, you get 30 uninterrupted weeks. We Week in and week out, you can get the kids, which is a great opportunity. Now, if you use that time the right way and slowly progress them, we talk about like make, I always like to refer to things back to food because I love to eat and I love to cook, but um, referring back to food, making a chili, you don't just throw the stuff in the pot and turn the thing on hot. You put the ingredients in at the right time, you put them in slowly, and you put that crock pot on low and let that thing cook all day. Same thing with developing an athlete. If we progress those kids slowly and appropriately throughout the course of a year, throughout the course of four years or five years, or in the case of our return missionaries, possibly seven or eight years, depending on what goes on with them, then we can really have a very good product, a healthy product with the kid at the end of that time. I could spend uh, probably a whole hour uh, just talking with you about the different stuff. We, pre we appreciate the time, Frank, and uh, Roger that. Roger, Roger that. that. All right, appreciate it, guys. Thank you for having me. Thank you.